Hello and welcome to TMXing Adventures. Lisa here and today we're going to make a really beautiful fresh dessert for Christmas entertaining. Now I don't know how to pronounce it but it's a beautiful mango and passion fruit dessert. It's got a layered biscuit in it that you make first and then we're going to make the beautiful syrups and things like that and put it together. So come with me today. If you've not tried it, today's the day to be inspired so you can go make this yourself for your own Christmas entertaining. So we'll go straight to start cooking. It is on guidance. It's on cookie do. You'll find it there but if you have trouble, reach out. I'd love to help you find it. Preheat your oven. Line a baking tray and it's a big baking tray, baking um, tray with baking paper. Okay, so it's a 30 by 40. And then insert your butterfly whisk. You get a little diagram here to help you if you need it, a little video, sorry. But high blades, backside, okay? Six egg whites, in they go. So in this goes, and we're gonna whip these egg whites up with some salt, apparently two pinches of salt. So there one big pinch without the measuring cup so it can let the air come into this beautiful dish. So we're going to go next and we're gonna go three minutes, 37 degrees, speed three. So I'll come back in the three minutes and we'll continue on with the next step. Okay, I thought I'd come back early and show you how beautiful those egg whites look in there. They're aerating out. They look absolutely beautiful in there. Can't wait to show you them. That's there it goes. So that was that three minute whip, 37 degrees, and now that's gonna be done and we're gonna put it aside. Look at that, very cool. So it tells us to, let's have a look. Remove the butterfly whisk, transfer into another bowl and set aside. Now I don't need to transfer it aside because I have the luxury of a second bowl. If you get the chance to get the second bowl or maybe you want something for Christmas and you're not sure what for your Thermomix, go to themixshop.com.au, no, thermomix.com.au, go to the shopping button and go to the mix shop and get yourself a bowl for Christmas. Best thing ever. Or um, otherwise reach out and I'll help you if you need a hand with that as well. So, um, transfer them apart, clean and dry the butterfly whisk, reinsert the butterfly whisk. I'm not gonna worry because I've read ahead and it doesn't actually matter if my butterfly whisk is dirty or not. Um, not for this next step because shortly we're actually gonna recombine all these ingredients. So, I'm not sure why they'd worry about that. Anywho, six yolks. So that's from our eggs, in they go. Next is going to be some sugar. Might just, um, I, know, I won't worry about it. I was gonna say I'll scrape that out, but I won't. 180 grams of caster sugar, in that goes. It is a lot of sugar, but hey, it's Christmas time, festive entertaining, and this makes eight. However, um, you could make them smaller portions as well. The only thing you need to be mindful of is which, with how many portions you make is when this biscuit uh, comes out the oven, it's one big slice, and we're gonna use our jar, that we're, our glass that we're actually gonna serve this in. We're going to use that for sizing of the little circles, and that's what you need to be mindful of, because you want three little circles, per jar or per glass to actually put it in, but that'll make sense in a second. All right, insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. Let's aerate this up. Four minutes on speed three. So I'll be back in a minute and we'll keep going with this recipe. See you soon. Okay, welcome back. Let's see what it's done inside. All right, we have whipped up egg yolk with sugar in it, I guess. So let's now add to it 150 grams of plain flour. Now I have not tested this gluten free. I am using plain, plain flour. Um, if I get a chance over the next few weeks, I'll give it a go with gluten free and I'll report back as to whether it works or not, okay? I'm just not confident to do it this time with the gluten free in case it flops. So 60 grams of corn flour, this is gluten free. Not that it matters now we've put the uh, glutinous stuff in, but by the way, gluten-free um, corn flour is not always standard. So if you are cooking, just a little tip, if you are cooking with gluten-free flour and gluten-free uh, corn flour and you think it's gluten-free, just check because it's not always, okay? Sometimes they are just a corn flour uh, that has gluten in it as well. All right, in without reserved egg whites. I'm sure I have a spatula, there it is. Always read your labels. Oh, there's a little bit of stuff that came out. That's okay. It's super hot today. We're actually due to get storms soon. So it's actually, look at how fluffy they are. Uh, quite humid at the moment. I wish I could show you the view. I've got a window here in front of the Thermomix and there's a storm rolling in down there. And uh, it's just gorgeous out there. You can see the lightning in the, in the clouds. So in with the reserved egg whites, it's served the measuring cup. 20 seconds, speed one, off it goes. While that's happening, tray with baking paper is the next step. So, 
rose gold tray from the meat shop and the baking paper. You do want baking paper on this because I think it's going to be quite sponge-like. So it is gonna, it's not going to work on just a silicon mat. It needs to come up the sides so that you can actually get a layer in there. Okay, let's see what it did. I wonder if it managed to pull all that white into it. Oh, I did too. How cool is that? All right, next. Scrape down the sides, a spatula, and then it looks like we're going to do one more spin through to get the last of that through. So I'll just lift that off and show you. It looks amazing. It's so fluffy. And I want to get all that food in. Okay, scrape it down. Top, also scrape the top of the butterfly down. I do find that food often gets stuck on top of there. It's a very pavlova feeling and fluffy, like a sponge cake in there actually. Okay, 20 seconds again, speed one. Now you'll notice in this recipe behind me, this recipe calls for fresh mangoes and fresh um, passion fruit. However, our passion fruit's got eaten by the birds and mangoes are not easy to come by at the moment and those that are really expensive. So we've gone for the frozen variety it's not the best, okay? I'm going to be truthful here. Sometimes when you buy a frozen mango, it can taste like it's not ripe yet. I'm hopeful that this batch will do okay. I've never used it for this recipe before. I've just used it at many demos making uh, Free Dream ice cream with it, which, by the way, is phenomenal. If you've not tried it, you've got to give it a go. Um, but I also figure this is getting combined with the passion fruit. So the passion fruit pulp will give it some sweet flavor and sweetness if necessary. So... Remove the butterfly whisk, spread the mixture onto the baking tray. So out with the butterfly whisk, which is just a wiggle and a jiggle. And then onto the tray spatula. Here it is. So you can see that texture there. Some of that flour came off the top of the butterfly, but that's all right. You can see that coming in beautifully there. And then we'll spread it around. So it's not supposed to be very thick. It's kind of like a sponge cake biscuit, I guess you could say, in there, are uh, going to make these beautiful layers. And they actually get soaked in the passion fruit mango um, syrup, which is going to make it absolutely beautiful as well. So this is going to go in the oven now, not for very long. Let's have a look in a second. I'll just get this all out. And you can see how thin it's going to be when you spread this around. This, this tray is pretty true to size for the 30 by 40. I haven't got the exact measurements, but I reckon it'd be pretty close. So... 12 minutes at 180 degrees. Let me just spread this out to the corners. And we want to be able to get 24 approximate circles out of this. Um, if that's how many, if you're trying to make eight little glasses. So have a, be mindful of that as well. Have a think about how many serves you need to make. You know, no point making eight serves if you need seven, unless you're doing a taste tester beforehand. Into the corners. Make sure you get it all in the corners as well. All right, a gentle little tap to just make sure it levels out. And then we're gonna allow it to cool once it comes out of the oven, okay? So I'm gonna put this in the oven, I will return once this is cool and we will continue on with the steps of this recipe. So we'll see you again soon. Okay, so the biscuits are actually still in the oven because I thought about it and I looked ahead in this recipe and it says that this next one needs to actually cool before we can use it. So I thought, you know what? I washed up the bowls, let's go ahead and complete this recipe, the parts that need to cool at least. So this says 250 grams of water. We're making a syrup, which we're gonna soak our beautiful biscuits in once they're cool. And once everything's cool. A little bit extra, doesn't matter. Some fresh mango, as I made mention, use what you've got, okay? So 200 grams. How good is it that the scales come up and tell us what to do? Like that I forget about and I take that for granted, but man, that makes it easy. A little heavy handed, doesn't really matter. All right, next up, caster sugar. Where did that go? It's up the back here. Just a little bit, 30 grams in there. In that little washout break, the power went out. So everything went unexpected shutdown and I had to wait and go through all the safety menus again. But anyway, we're back, thank goodness for that. On with the lid, and we're going to actually lift this on speed five and chop it down for 10 seconds. So let's do that. Okay, place the simmering basket on top and we're gonna cook it for 12 minutes at 100 degrees, speed one. I'll just show you what that looks like in there. Bit of a chopped down mess. Okay, this looks perfect. 
So off to speed one, and I'll be back in 12 minutes. We're going to add some passion fruit juice and finish off this part of the syrup. So we shall see you back in 12 minutes. Okay, welcome back. What I forgot to do in my talking at the end there is put the simmering basket on top instead of the measuring cup. So do remember to do that so that it can actually reduce the liquid down in quantity because that's supposed to evaporate out. I had the measuring cup in, it was going to hold that in and I'm fairly certain it told me to put the simmering basket on top. Okay, one, two to three tablespoons of fresh passion fruit. Um, in saying that, I don't think it made a difference, that much of a difference. Like I really, it was about the last three minutes when I went, oh, hang on, simmering basket was supposed to be on top. So I don't know how much of a difference it truly would have made. Anyway, let's keep going. Passion fruit pulp, in it goes. I just guesstimated. On with the measuring cup and it's got a five second mix through. And then we're going to put it aside to cool. And we're going to talk about our biscuit that's up the back here. So give it this a second to mix through. We're going to put it into our jar. Transfer into a bowl and set aside to cool. So that's where it's going in here. It needs to be large enough that you can actually dip your biscuits into it to do the layering in a moment, okay? So I'm just gonna go into here. Look at that, it smells amazing. I can smell this passion fruit in there, it's beautiful. Now it says to clean and dry the bowl. However, you guys know me, I actually don't want to. It's not gonna particularly matter. We're actually gonna be adding mascarpone, which today we're using cream cheese because I couldn't get any at our local supermarket. Um, so cream cheese instead and some egg yolks and sugar. So I figure a little bit of yellow residue in there is not gonna be a problem at all. You probably want the bowl to cool slightly anyway because otherwise that will melt your cheese. That's probably the only thing to consider. So dice the remaining um, mango. Now because I'm using frozen and uh, you don't need to dice it, it comes diced, which is cool. Reinsert the butterfly whisk. So this is where we're moving on to the next step. But I am going to give this bowl a second. There it is, in over the back of the high blades, okay? Because at the moment, my bowl is 75 degrees. So I'm just going to give it a moment to cool while we talk about the biscuits at the back here. So let me just slide this down. So here is my biscuits out of the oven. You can see how thick it is. It's quite thin. It's about a centimetre thick. Um, and it's quite a little bit denser than a sponge cake would be how I would explain it. Now I've worked out that I just need 18 of these. Now I looked at their picture and I think they've only got two in each container. As much as they said it serves eight and you make 24 little rings, which would make three per serving, it looks like they've only got two. But I'm gonna go with three. I'm gonna load it up and show you what that looks like. You can decide. You could go bigger, smaller, more in there. I wouldn't go less than two, wouldn't go four. I feel like two to three is a good number. So all I'm doing is I found something approximately the right size for how many circles I needed to get out of here. I've got a glass I'm gonna use uh, and jars as well so that everyone can have one. Okay, but you could just put it in a cup, although you wouldn't see the pretty layers if you did that. So it might be nice to do it layered. The other thing I thought you could do is you could do a large one, you know, like a trifle. You could do it in like a trifle glass dish so you can see the whole lot. I thought that would be really pretty as well. So this should fit, it's gonna squeeze through the lid, but I think it'll fit down there. If not, it'll break and that doesn't really matter for me. So we're gonna just cut the little rings Hopefully my cutter will work. There we go, bit of a twist to mine and it'll come off. And we're gonna get our little biscuits, which are going to be soaked in our liquid. So I might just do three of these so that I can show you the assemblage of this one, and then we will move on. I have a spare bowl. What we might actually do, just uh, while I'm thinking on my feet, is rather than waiting for this to cool, oh no, it's 55 degrees, we are good to go. It's gonna say I could use my second bowl, but that's okay. Let's just clear some space. I've cut out three of these beautiful biscuits, ready to go back there, and let's continue on. So back up to the recipe, and by the way, I have skipped the steps in between that tells you to cut these out. All right, let it cool, cut it out. Mine's still slightly warm. This is a great recipe if you want it to be organized in advance. You could actually make this a week in advance. You could actually freeze the little discs. You could have your syrup in the fridge and you could assemble them the morning or the afternoon of the event. Like you actually could put this together at a later stage, which I think is perfect. So first things first is two eggs. Cheating a little bit. Um, I, with these eggs, um, I have yolks left over from other things. So I'm gonna actually use my leftover yolks rather than putting whole eggs in. A great way to use up your yolks. Also, if you had spare yolks from the other dishes, you could also be doing things like putting in, um, making custards, making ice creams, things like that. Okay, 100 grams of caster sugar. Again, I'm using raw. 
And I think I've made mention, but I reckon you could use your monk fruit sweetener if you liked. It is festive season, so I'm not that fussed about um, the amount of sugar because I'm actually trying to be super clean in the mains. You know, if we look at what we put on that list of downloads, go to tmxcadventures.com.au. You can download my festive list there. But I've got there like a couple of salads. They're really clean. The turkey roulade, which I've done with chicken, is really clean as well. Um, you know, the ham's got a bit of sugar in it, but it's really not much in the scheme of it when you're only getting that layer on the outside. So really, I've looked for things that are really quite healthy and clean so that you can offset it with the really fun stuff, okay? So that's what I've kind of done this year. So we're going to cook this off for... What are we doing? No, we're whipping it, sorry. Not cooking, whipping. Six minutes on speed four. So we're gonna spin it up and I'll come back in six minutes and I'll show you the next step. Okay, welcome back. This is just whipped up. Now I was thinking through that whip time, if you needed your egg to be cooked, you could actually be cooking it in this whip up time as well. If you put it on 60 degrees, that's your um, pasteurizing temperature and that would certainly work. Remove the butterfly whisk. And now we're going to add some mascarpone. As I made mention, couldn't get that, so we are doing cream cheese, which I think will work just as well. Softened into there, or room temperature more so. Oh, I'm dripping the liquid on things. And then insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid again. And we're just going to whip this out before we assemble it. So 30 seconds, and we're going to put the whole lot together. Okay, it's assembling time. All right, so we've got our components all done. You can see that's a little bit yellow because I've actually left that contents in there, which I'm quite happy about. And now all we do, and I'll show you how to put one together. And of course, you can actually save this for assembly right before your event, which is super cool as well. So this is ready. Oh, it looks amazing. It's like, I guess it's like a mango cheesecake, right? So now we're gonna put it together. So it says to put, to assemble, let's grab a jar. Dip the reserved biscuit into the cooked mango. So, biscuit, mango, hopefully it's not too hot. One side, I'm just gonna flip it onto the other side. Excuse the fingers, and I'm gonna see if I can get it in here without breaking it. Probably doesn't matter if I break it, to be honest. Oh, there we go, perfect fit. Okay, there's one. Then, it's gonna be my jar, so I'm okay with licking my fingers. Then, Place the biscuit into the bottom of eight serving glasses. Then cover each biscuit with two tablespoons of the masca mascarpone. I forgot how to pronounce it for a second there. Okay, so two tablespoons of that goes in, which must be about like that. I might put a little bit more in, since it's my glass. And then it tells us to top with, not to finger lick it in this one, Oh, it's beautiful. That mixture is amazing. Okay, with fresh mango pieces. So on that goes, mine is semi-frozen still. I don't think that would particularly matter. Yum, this is beautiful. I don't know why I haven't made this sooner. And then we do it again. So we do another layer. And then see if we can get it through the top of the thing. Ugh. All right, perfect. And then we grab some of this. And I don't think, just like the picture, I was planning on putting three layers. I don't think there's any way that you can put three layers on top of this. Um, I think it would make a massive mess. So I think we're just gonna have to settle for two layers. But you can make the dish go further then, can't you? So I guess it's not a bad thing. But there we go. That is how you make this beautiful recipe. Give it a go, I'd love to know what you think. I can't now touch anything, my fingers are so gooey, I wanna lift it up and show you guys. I think the hardest thing is my glass is, is um, inward shaped glass, so getting my biscuits through the lid I've made quite a mess. So a little bit of advice is pick a glass or a jar that goes straight upright so that you're not going to have that problem of trying to squeeze it into the center and making a mess on the rim of your glass. But otherwise, give this recipe a go. Amazing, simple, easy, which is what I need. Um, can be done well in advance. Again, something else that I need as well. So I hope you're enjoying these recipes. I hope you're feeling inspired and I hope you give them a go as well. When you do, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and share. Okay, and also the little bell button down the bottom. Click on that because that's gonna tell you when I go live, you'll get notified. But otherwise, thanks for joining me today. Um, my name is Lisa from TMXing Adventures. I'm gonna wash my hands and figure out how to stop my camera now, but I look forward to inspiring you further in the next video with your thermomixing. So take care and we'll see you then. Bye for now.